What is going on guys? JD from New York here. This is episode number 12 of Off The Script. This is part one leading into your Mother's Day weekend for news and rumors right here on YouTube.com for the week ending May 11th. 2014 guys and like you already know this is your number one source for all your WWE needs right here on youtube.com now you guys have been taken to Twitter and asking me JD do you have enough news and rumors for the week it's been pretty slow my answer to you is yes I got a bunch of stuff for you guys uh, some important stuff that you're gonna want to sit down and listen so grab a cold beverage Join me to begin your weekend for news and rumors. And also, guys, two things. If you missed my Monday Night Raw review, which most of you have, because YouTube seems to be fucking me lately. I don't know why, but if you missed my Monday Night Raw review face cam for this past Monday's Fallout from Extreme Rules, link is down below. Go and check that out if you missed it uh, earlier this week. And also, my brother's band, Legionary. New teaser for their new EP, Once and For All, for the track, Detached from reality go and check that out link is also down below please go and support him i'm trying to get his music and his name and his band name and his bandmates everything regarding that band out there to the general public these guys need to be heard because they are simply better than pretty much every underground band that you can possibly name so go and check that out i support them very much i love what my brother's doing he's got a huge passion for what he's doing and it shows in his music so go and check that out if you missed it and please leave a like and a favorite on that because i would greatly much appreciate it and he will as well now the biggest new story of the week guys if you remember Shawn michaels i mentioned this a few uh i think it was last week i actually mentioned this or a couple weeks back but i have been mentioning it Shawn Michaels was on the Ross Report with Jim Ross and his podcast. Link is down below as well if you guys missed it. I highly recommend you go and check that out and dedicate some time to listen to it. Unbelievable listen you will not want to miss. But one thing from that interview that I took and I found news on, okay, listen to this. This is very, very big. Shawn Michaels and Jim Ross had a lengthy discussion about The Undertaker and The Streak during HBK's new interview on the Ross Report. Michaels told Jim Ross that the decision to end the streak was made just hours before WrestleMania 30 began. Ross added that he spoke to Undertaker in New Orleans and asked how many matches he has left. Undertaker told, Undertaker told Jim Ross that he would know in a few hours, meaning after the match with Brock Lesnar. HBK said Undertaker told him he would contact Michaels a few weeks after WrestleMania and update him on his health and future. HBK said he does know that Taker was very banged up after the match, and Michaels also talked about how it was Vince McMahon's decision alone to end the streak. Sean was confident that Vince had a good reason in his mind for ending the streak. Wow. Undertaker streak in the hands of Vince McMahon. HBK said that the streak was decided on four hours before WrestleMania 30 began. That's where I have a problem with it. You have The Undertaker, who is pretty much a staple at WrestleMania, going against Brock Lesnar that this match has been planned for years. This, this is a match The Undertaker wanted. Okay? Years in the making. We knew this was going to happen before it was even announced. And you come to a conclusion on the match four hours before WrestleMania 30 began? Why? Why? Is it because you wanted to, you know, pretty much just shock the audience at WrestleMania? Did you feel funny that afternoon and said, you know what, let's go ahead and do it. Let's throw the, the wrench into the gears and just fuck up the entire card. Right? Fuck up the entire vibe for the card. Because if that's what Vince McMahon had in mind, if that was his good reason, that's exactly what he did. His reason was met with utter disappointment. That's exactly what happened at WrestleMania. More people than not are disappointed that the streak is over. More people than not are disappointed that the streak is over. And now that Shawn Michaels has pretty much opened up that can of worms and stated on Jim Ross's podcast, which is a legit show, Okay? Jim Ross, one of the biggest names in wrestling ever. One of the, probably the best play by play man that you will ever see. Nobody will ever touch him. On his show, stated that four hours before WrestleMania 30 began, that's when you decide to end the streak. Something so important to the, you know, to, to the company, to WrestleMania, such as the streak, and it's just hours before? 
you you decide to just end it? Is that is that how important the streak is to you, Vince? I don't understand. If it, if it was if it was something that monumental and that big, don't you think you would have a plan in place? You know, if, if the decision is made to end it, where do you go from there? I swear to God, I hope I hope Vince has a reason, a very good reason, and Sean is confident. Okay, nobody knows Vince better than Shawn Michaels. Now, if you have a good reason, I hope Vince has it. What is the reason for ending the streak? Why? We won't know at all until Undertaker goes on Steve Austin's podcast. Why do you end the streak? What good reason is there to end the streak right now? The only legit reason that we have is because the Undertaker is in bad health. According to Vince McMahon, Vince was worried this was going to be the Undertaker's last match, and that's the way he wanted the Undertaker to go out, which I still don't even understand. You want your biggest name in company history to go out like that? What is his reason? Now that we got this information out about the streak, that it, that it was, deci the decision was made four hours before WrestleMania began, now we have to dive in deeper to this story and find out what Vince's reason is to end it four hours before WrestleMania 30. I still don't think Brock Lesnar is the right guy. I really don't. I will never believe Brock Lesnar is the right guy. I, I don't believe the streak should have been ended, period. I don't think it should have been ever ended. You had so much more money to make with The Undertaker, and this was the shittiest way for him to go out, whether he's banged up or not. You know The Undertaker was going to come back regardless next year, if they, if they did get Sting on board. There's no way The Undertaker's not going to be at WrestleMania if he wrestles one time a year. Everybody in wrestling history, you name them. When WrestleMania comes around, they want to be a part of it. You think The Undertaker's going to want to sit at home during WrestleMania 30 weekend or 31 weekend, 32 weekend, and just sit at home and watch? He wants to be there. Why do you think all these guys want to be there? They want that excitement. They want that adrenaline rush. They want that feeling to be around the WWE at WrestleMania. They want to be at the event. Look at Hogan. Look at Austin. Look at The Rock. They were all there at WrestleMania. Whether they had a planned appearance or not, they were all there. They all moved everything that they had on their schedule to be there. They want to be there. The Rock is rumored to be coming back. Austin is teasing to be coming back. Hogan has been saying that he's happy to be home back at WrestleMania. You think The Undertaker's going to want to sit at home on WrestleMania weekend and not compete? It's in his blood. The fans want to see it. The money's going to be there. Why would he not want to be there no matter how banged up he is? And I don't even believe these stories about him being banged up. Undertaker has put on five-star matches every year that I can remember since going against Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 25. Every match has been non-stop action intensity, storytelling, everything was there. Everything regarding Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Even CM Punk and Undertaker put on a decent match. The build was okay. It wasn't as good as uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, but the match was okay. Four out of five stars, I'd say. It wasn't nearly the classic uh, that he put on with HBK. But uh, regardless, Undertaker um, should have kept his streak. I've been saying this for weeks. Uh, it, it, it's over and done with. I'm not complaining about it. That's just my honest opinion. They gave it to Lesnar. Now the step is, or, or, or the, the next task at hand, is what do you do with Brock Lesnar? Brock Lesnar, I've been saying this, has the keys to the kingdom. He has the keys to the kingdom. What do you do there? Do you give him the WWE Championship? Do you have him lose to Cesaro? And then, uh, which is being rumored, by the way, I'll talk about that uh, sometime this weekend. Um, rumored to have... Lesnar and Cesaro go at SummerSlam. Do you, do you have Brock lay down for Cesaro and build Cesaro up as a face? Because obviously, you know, Heyman's going to be a heel with Lesnar. What do you do? you got so many avenues. you got to make the right decision, what's best for business. And I don't think this decision to end the streak right now is best for business. You're leaving the biggest match possibly in WrestleMania history on the table with this loss to Brock Lesnar. Everyone, I don't care who you are, I don't care if you're a wrestling fan or a casual fan who doesn't watch all the time. And you just watch the big name uh, fights, the big name pay-per-views. Cena versus Undertaker is a money match. That should have happened at WrestleMania. Now, if it does happen, if it ever happens again, there's no meaning to it because it means nothing. Unless the Undertaker wants to go out, uh, his last hurrah, his last ride off into the sunset, 
against the face of the company. But even at that point, I don't even want to see it. Because it means nothing. The, the unpredictability of the Undertaker undefeated at WrestleMania going against John Cena, who we all know overcomes all odds, that would have been money in the making. One of the most unpredictable matches ever. I would have gladly watched and seen that at WrestleMania just to have a fucking taste of unpredictability when John Cena goes against the Undertaker. Because, you know, you, you, you all know you would have been sweating, sitting at the fucking edge of your couches watching that match with fucking bated breath. Is Cena going to do it? Oh my God. Oh my God, they're going to give it to Cena. You know that for a fucking fact and that's money right there. That is fucking money and that's the, that's the fucking mistake WWE made. Shame on them and shame on Vince for making such a stupid decision. But I'm looking forward to Undertaker going on Steve Austin's podcast and hopefully revealing some more truth and some more light into this subject about why Vince wanted to do it. What is Vince's reason? Why was the decision made to end the streak? That's my opinion on it. That's the biggest news story of this week. I found that to be very, very interesting. Uh, like I said, if you missed Jim Ross's podcast, link is down below in the description. So go check that out and square away some time because when Jim Ross talks, you listen. So you're going to be sitting there for about an hour. So go and listen to that, guys. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, there is speculation that Kane, Kane may lose the rumored Buried Alive match to Daniel Bryan at WWE Payback as a way to write him off TV for a few months until he returns to promote WWE Studios' See No Evil 2. The movie does not have an official release date, but it is expected sometime in October. When Kane first gave up his mask last fall, the idea was that he would look more like his Jacob Goodnight character in the movie See No Evil. I don't care as long as I keep the WWE Championship on Daniel Bryan, and he moves away from this fucking, fucking grade D, I would give it. It's like a cheesy fucking horror flick, a WWE Studios horror flick that he's fucking uh, starring in with Kane. Move him away from this, move him, move him into something a little bit more serious, where he can establish himself truly as a WWE Champion. Everyone should be afraid to get into the ring with Daniel Bryan, but you're making him look like a fucking fairy... Uh, with his wife Brie Bella screaming, uh, like, like she don't, she, like she don't know how to act. That's what I, that's what I gathered on Monday Night Raw. Terrible acting, terrible program, um, and I only say it's terrible because of what we've seen on Monday Night Raw. Everything leading up to that where Brian was standing his ground and standing firm to Stephanie and, you know, trying to save his wife from Cain, that's, that's what they should be doing. Hopefully WWE expresses this on TV to the point where Daniel Bryan is simply trying to save his wife from being tortured and captured by Kane instead of running away from Kane. You know, that's what I got on Monday Night Raw. I seen Daniel Bryan, the WWE champion, running away from Kane, not wanting to engage in battle with Kane. Meanwhile, you got Brie Bella screaming uh, to the point where it just became ear piercing, and I don't want to see that anymore. So hopefully, buried alive, Kane gets buried, Bryan moves on to something a little bit more important. And uh, what else do I got here? Uh, PW Insider has confirmed uh, that there will be a Buried Alive match, uh, like I just previously mentioned for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship between Kane and Daniel Bryan. That is planned for payback. They also confirmed plans to have Evolution and The Shield go at it again. While there is talk of doing a six-man tag ra uh, rematch at payback, there is also talk of doing a series of three singles matches with members of each group going at it one-on-one. -on -one. Now that is pretty interesting. The big discussion at this week's WWE tapings was what to do with the Shield and Evolution at Payback, so they're going back and forth on different ideas. I would rather see some type of, uh, I don't know, I, I want to see some type of, some type of six-man tag, but they really got to make it interesting. They're going to make it stand out from what they did at Extreme Rules. They can't rehash it, otherwise people are going to get bored of it. Uh, it's going to become stale and repetitive, and I don't want to see that. Um, singles matches are okay. Uh, but I'd rather see the Shield cohesively as a unit. Um, I think uh, a lot of the momentum for the feud would kind of be dwindled down if there were singles matches. I think if you see all six men in the ring going at it, big collision head on uh, head on head one on one, uh, the Shield versus Evolution. I think that would be better for TV. It'll come off better on TV. I don't want to see any singles matches though. It is an interesting idea. I think they will save the singles matches for um, later on down the line when Triple H actually gets his uh, hands and one-on-one -on -one match with Roman Reigns, which is being rumored for SummerSlam. Uh, according to PW Insider, WWE reportedly has an offer on the table for Ric Flair to come back on a much more regular basis 
but he has to dot his I's and cross his T's and get his house, his house in order. It's not clear what is exactly meant by that or what that refers to, but it could mean that Flair needs to tie up some loose ends on his personal end in his personal life before going back on the road with WWE. It was said that if Flair gets his stuff in order, don't be surprised if he's more involved with guys like Triple H and Randy Orton going forward. Now, this only makes sense because Batista, which I will talk about tomorrow, is taking time off. I got big news on Batista and why he's taking off and what he did to Vince McMahon in the process. Stay tuned for that, but if Batista is going away, I do see Ric Flair coming back on a more regular basis to kind of keep the whole Evolution team together until Batista comes back from his promotion for uh, his movie that he's doing. So I do see Ric Flair coming back, and it's always great to see Flair on TV. He always adds that, that nice little flair, quote-unquote, to TV. It's always exciting when he's on there. It's always unpredictable. So um, I do see Ric Flair coming back when Batista exits uh, for a couple of months to go promote Guardians of the Galaxy, which uh, he's... Uh, um, going to be starring in his new Marvel movie. So, look forward to seeing Ric Flair. I do predict he will be back on WWE TV. But that is news and rumors off the script, guys. Part 1. Join me in Part 2 where I got uh, a new story on Batista and what he did to Vince McMahon. Why did he turn down Vince McMahon's offer to appear at uh, Payback to go one-on-one -on -one with Daniel Bryan? What did he do and what did he say to Vince McMahon? Stay tuned for that, guys. I got news on that. And I got much more news uh, going into your Mother's Day weekend, so stay tuned, guys. I'm out. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave your like ratings down below, your comments. Let me know what you thought about this week's biggest stories in part one, and leave a comment down below. Like I said, guys, like, favorite, share, all that bullshit. I'm out. I'll see you on part two. Take care, and until then, this is JD. I'll see you guys.